Hey guys, Nick here with another Synaptic Sound FL Studio tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to detect the pitch of any sample in FL Studio. Um, now the primary reason you're going to want to do this is so that all of your samples are tuned to whatever scale you're using. Now what that means is um, your scale is basically a set of notes that you've chosen when you uh, began your track and um, they sound nicely together and um, they're each one of those notes in the scale has a frequency associated with it and in turn a specific pitch associated with it. Now um, in order for things to sound um, sound nice and harmonic you're going to want to tune your samples to match the scale. So let's take a look at the scale we have here. You can go into the piano roll, go to helpers, go to scale highlighting, and I set it to E major. Now the E major scale is highlighted in the piano roll. So you can see all of these white um, rows. Those are notes that uh, appear on the E major scale. So we want all of our samples to basically match um, the notes in the scale. So let's take a look at our kick. Now um, you just right click on the kick sample here and go to edit an audio editor. This will bring up Edison. And then you can right click on the waveform in Edison, go to regions, go to detect pitch regions. Now FL Studio ran an algorithm and determined that this kick is in the key A. So now what we need to do is determine if A falls within our scale. So we can go to our scale highlighting or our piano roll, take a look, and yes, A is highlighted, so that means this kick will work with this scale. So what happens if your sample doesn't match the scale? You're going to have to do what's called tuning the sample, and we'll show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and find a kick that's not on the scale. So this is a set of tuned kicks that I found, and uh, I'll link them in the description for you. They're free for download. And we can pick F for this one because F actually doesn't fall on the E major scale. So there's F. You can see it's darker. So let's pick a kick in the key F. And just to verify, we can go back into Edison and do the pitch, de pitch detection algorithm again. So go to Edit and Audio Editor, right click, Regions, Detect Pitch Regions. And you can see that FL Studio is saying that it is indeed F. Okay. So what we need to do is shift the pitch of this sample up or down to the nearest note to or from what the original sample was at. So the original sample is F and it looks like we can shift it up to F sharp or down to E in order to line it up with the scale. So how do we do that? Well the difference in pitch shift between any two adjacent keys on the keyboard is going to be equal to 100 cents or one semitone. So if you look up here your range, this is the range of your pitch shift for this sample in semitones. So for instance, 
this 12 semitone range would give us a full range of minus one octave and plus one octave of pitch shift. So we've already determined that from F to F sharp is going to be one semitone. So that means to bring it from F to F sharp, we need to increase the pitch by one semitone. So now this kick, instead of being F, is going to be F sharp. Now the same applies when you're going down the scale. So we're at F, we want to go to E. It's a difference of 100 cents or one semitone. Move it down one. So now we're at E. You can see it was highlighting C. Um, that is, I think all this, the uh, samples are triggered uh, at C by default. So you can just ignore that for now. It's actually tuned to E right now. Now, keep in mind that you're not restricted to the nearest, um, you know, the nearest notes. You can go to any one of these notes. So, for instance, let's say I wanted to go from F to C sharp down here. You would count how many notes or keys away uh, C sharp is from F. So, one, two, three, four, and that's equal to four semitones. And now you want to change your range to four semitones and crank it all the way down. And now your kick is tuned to C sharp. And again, um, this can be done with any sample, really. Um, as long as you know the pitch or as long as FL Studio can detect the pitch. Um, it's almost, most definitely should be done with the kick. Um, kick should always be part of your scale. Uh, that's the most common, uh, common use case um, that I use it for. But anyway, uh, that about wraps it up for this tutorial. Hope you learned something. And uh, be sure to check out the Synaptic Sound blog linked in the description below. I've also got the written version of the tutorial and uh, these tuned kicks linked down there as well. And uh, that wraps it up.